Now in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be turning 33 years old and I still drive the car that my wife got when she graduated high school. The AC and heat still work on it. It gets me from A to B and also the best part about it is no payment. Now, can I afford a nicer car? Yes, I can, but I don't really need it. Now, that is just one of the many examples in how I live a frugal lifestyle. But in today's video, I wanna share with you some of the reasons why I choose to live like this. One of my absolute most favorite things to do in life is to spend time with my wife and kids. Honestly, one of the best parts of my day is waking up having a nice cup of coffee, and talking about what the day has in store for all of us. I also really enjoy working out, going on a nice long run, enjoying new experiences with my family, or even getting a nice Fortnite victory royale with my six-year-old son. And one of the main reasons I'm able to enjoy all this on a day-to-day -day basis is because I choose not to live a very expensive lifestyle. Because let's think about this for a second. If I choose to spend more, well then now I'm gonna have to earn more. And if I have to earn more, that means I'm gonna have to work more. And ultimately, what that's going to do is take away the time of doing things that I truly enjoy. And ultimately, what this all comes down to is freedom. And I can get the freedom much faster by living a frugal lifestyle. Now that may mean I don't get as much stuff in life. For example, like the fact that I'm still driving my wife's car from high school. But I don't really need new stuff. It doesn't really make me any more happy. Now, there may be some short-term happiness in there, but that never really lasts that long. For example, when you will get a new car, it's exciting, right? It feels good. But what does it feel like after owning that car for about a year? When you get into it, it's just not as exciting anymore. And especially if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. That new car smell and feel definitely goes away relatively quick. And then before you know it, you're just driving around another everyday old car. Now for me, I like to spend my money on things that will bring me happiness on repeat. Now one thing my wife and I both agreed on is that we said we want to spend our money on experiences versus material items. The reason for this is because a lot of our greatest memories that we have together and that we reminisce on is experiences we've had together. For example, travel. When we're going on a long drive or sitting at a nice restaurant somewhere having some conversation, one of the most talked about things in our family is experiences we've had together from traveling. These memories that we have together that stick in our minds that we can discuss with one another through conversation is experiences and money that I've spent that will pay dividends for a lifetime. These are memories that I will have until the day that I die that I can cherish that I've got to spend with my wife, my kids, and my loved ones. And we quickly found out that those material items that we could have been spending our money on was not giving us the near amount of enjoyment as what the experiences were giving us. Now, did you know that 73% of Americans rank their finances as the number one stress in life? The shocking part is if we break this down to different generations, us younger generations are even more stressed about our finances with around 81 to 82% of Gen Zers and millennials stating that finances are their number one stress in life. I absolutely hate reading that statistic. And to be completely honest with you guys, given the times that we're currently living in, it's making it even harder to catch up financially. And that statistic is actually another one of the main reasons why I choose to live a frugal lifestyle of stress-free finances. Living a frugal lifestyle means I don't have as many bills that go out every single month. And since I don't have as many bills going out every single month, that means I don't have to earn as much money every single month. And since I don't have to earn as much money every single month, I don't have to work as much every single month. Do you see a pattern here? Now, I currently live down in Florida with my wife and kids, and I actually just published a video not too long ago talking about some of the reasons why we are actually leaving the state of Florida and moving back home to Missouri. Now, one of the main reasons I talked about in that video on why we are leaving the state of Florida is because of family. We wanna get back home to Missouri because that's where the rest of our family lives. But for a close second on the reason why we are leaving the state of Florida is because the cost of lifestyle. See, the difference of lifestyle to live a day-to-day -day life in Florida versus back home in Missouri is two totally different worlds. Between the cost of homes, property taxes, insurance, CDD fees, HOAs, food, beverages, everything else down here in Florida just costs more money. To where back home, everything I just listed and even more is much, much cheaper than living here in Florida. Now, ultimately, as I stated, we did decide as a family that we will be moving the state of Florida. And one of those main reasons is because it costs a lot more to live here. Now, could we afford to live here and stay here in Florida? Absolutely, we really could. But what comes with that is that's more money coming out of our pocket every single month 
in order to live the lifestyle that we would want to live here. And really when it just comes down to it, it wasn't worth it to my wife and I to end up staying here for what it was gonna cost us. With us moving back home to Missouri and drastically decreasing the amount of expenses we have going out every single month, that easily is going to ease up the stress that I have in order of how much I need to make, what our bills are looking like, what different things cost every single month. Moving back home was a frugal decision that we made as a family because of the lifestyle that we want to live. We want to have more freedom. We want to have more chances to spend money on experiences. And the money that we had going out every single month for what things were going to cost to live the lifestyle that we wanted to live down here, we just didn't want to do it. It wasn't worth it to us. We knew that we could always spend a little bit of money, fly down to Florida, experience it, and have fun traveling down here for maybe a week, two or three weeks at a time, instead of having to live and pay that full-time expenses of coming down and staying here permanently. Now, this was a pretty drastic change that we decided to make as a family, and sometimes you have to make big changes in life in order to live the lifestyle that you wanna live. And for us, we wanted a lifestyle of freedom. Now, that word, freedom, I've brought that up a lot already in this video, and I'm probably continue going to be using it for the rest of this video. Freedom is what we all strive for. It is what we want in life. The ability to wake up every single morning and say, yeah, you know what? I feel like getting some work done. I feel like working today. Or to have the choice to say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not working today, <laughs> is the ultimate dream. Frugal living helped me get closer to that lifestyle because the more money I saved, was more money that I could put into investments. Now, two of my biggest financial goals that I have for myself and my family right now is to build up our taxable brokerage account to be over $1 million, as well as to add three more additional rental properties to our portfolio. And one way that I can accelerate these financial goals is by living that frugal lifestyle. It's worked for me in the past, and it's gonna to continue to work for me in the future. With thoughtful spending and tracking where my money goes, that ultimately is gonna give me more money to put towards investments in reaching those financial goals that I have for myself. This in return is buying my freedom back. I'm basically getting freedom back to do what I want to do in life. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I don't have as much money going out every single month. I'm choosing to live that frugal lifestyle so that I can return, have the freedom, and live the life that I want to live. Now, one big tip that I have for you viewers out there, if you're watching this video, thinking about wanting to make this lifestyle change and start living a more frugal type lifestyle. The first thing you're gonna have to understand is you have to not give a crap about what people think about you. I'm sure we've all heard the term keeping up with the Joneses. Like when your neighbor goes out and gets that brand new car and you're sitting at it and you're like, damn, that looks nice. I kind of want a new car. That's where you have to stop and think about your true goals in life and what they are. If you're wanting to get to freedom, if you're wanting to be able to put more money in investments, and if you wanna be more financially secure in life, so you don't have that financial stress or financial burden like a lot of Americans are living with on a day-to-day -day basis, like I read earlier in the video. Understand your reasoning and the goal that you are doing what you do. Yes, there is compromise. There are sacrifices that you have to make when you live this type of lifestyle, but ultimately the reward at the end of the race is what's worth it. The reward of earning your freedom back, the reward of living a lifestyle of not having as much stress financially, making you sleep that much better at night is what makes it all worth it. You don't wanna get caught up in the hamster wheel because as we all know, as you go buy more nice things, you have to continue to work to pay for those nice things. Now, I'm not saying you can't go out and buy something nice every now and then. My wife and I do that whenever we have enough money saved up or we've made a big jump in putting money in towards investments or we bought a new rental property or whatever that may be, we go out and we celebrate that and we buy things that we want or that we need, but we're not doing this all the time. We're not getting caught in that hamster wheel of spending the money that we earn so we have to go back and keep working to earn more of that money that we just continually keep spinning. Do you see the pattern here? Another big benefit with frugal living and why I choose to be so frugal is I want to be prepared if shit hits the fan. If all hell breaks loose and we end up in another recession like it's looking like we're potentially going towards over the next few years, I want to make sure that I know I'm set up enough financially to make it through the tough times. If my main source of income happens to dry up, I need to know that I have other sources of income out there as well as I have my spending in order because I'm able to make it through those tough times and don't have money going out to pay all these different bills that I have to worry about. The less bills I have, the less I have to worry about bringing that income in to make sure all those bills get paid. Because I saved the money and because I invested that money I saved and I also have minimal expenses on a month-to-month -month basis, 
besides what my wife and I choose to spend our money on, I'm going to be okay during tough times. And better yet, if we happen to not see tough times around the corner and the economy just continues to stay on the steady growth, which don't get me wrong, would also be great. Well, then I will be able to continue to flood that savings into investments, which ultimately will just be able to buy my freedom back that much faster. With this frugal lifestyle and hell, honestly, with anything in life, guys, it's all about compromise. You're not always going to be able to get your cake and eat it too. There will be sacrifices that you have to make, but that is part of the journey. Some things that I like to choose to spend my money on is we like going out to eat. We like going to travel. We like spending our money on experiences instead of buying material items. And we choose to spend that money wisely so we are able to save a lot of money at the end of the month. And in return, like I said, put that into an investment so we're buying our freedoms back. But with that, we're not able to spend a lot of money on different items that we may want or that may look nice during that time being. We choose to spend the money on what works for us and what gives us the most happiness. For example, another thing I choose to spend less on is bigger expensive items. I choose to not go buy the biggest, nicest, fanciest house that I can afford. I choose to not go buy the biggest, nicest, fanciest car that I can afford. And with me choosing to save on these larger expenses that most Americans tend to come up with during their lifetime, I have a lot of extra savings on a monthly basis that I can choose to do what I want with. Now, if I'm choosing to, you know, not go out and buy a coffee or choosing to not, you know, have everything plugged into my outlets, I don't feel like that is necessarily where our minds need to be focusing on living this frugal lifestyle. Don't get me wrong. I'm still the guy that yells at my kids for leaving the lights on and I'm, you know, going behind them and turning all the lights off on the house. I still do that kind of stuff, but the main first focus needs to be on these larger expenses. I see a lot of people who are going out and buying cars that are way too expensive that they can't afford or becoming house poor and buying homes that they simply are just getting strapped in and they're gonna end up hurting themselves in the long run because the amount of money it takes to pay for that house on a monthly basis is worth 40, 50% of their take home pay that is where a lot of people can get in trouble and that's also where a lot of people can get stuck on that hamster wheel I was talking about earlier. When you choose to focus on the bigger ticket items first, that has a much bigger effect on your overall finances. Once you get that stuff in order, then you can choose to take the next step down and focus on the materialistic items or whatever items you choose that you know doesn't seem to bring you as much happiness as something else would. So you always need to keep that mindset when you're making those big life decisions of buying a house, buying a car, or maybe you're deciding to, if you wanna buy that new handbag or whatever that may be, ultimately think, with the money that I'm choosing to spend here, how much more of my freedom am I giving up to purchase that 